happy new month today we'll be make, looking at how to make api calls in flutter how to use apis display api data in your flutter you know most times you don't want to add code everything you want to get your data from a backend so you just need to install the http package i'll leave the link in the description below also we need a link for our api so and we'll be using a json placeholder this one here is just a placeholder now they have many things like for post comment we'll be using the users and let's check how the api looks so i clicked on this and this is loading all right so yeah you can get data from random no random users just auto generated it's not as if they are real users so they are just generated users okay and yeah i just have a simple code of my material up a scaffold and app bar let's create a file called api call dot that let's create a file called api call dot that and yeah we'll be creating a class of users you can call this anything but i just prefer to call it users and we'll be getting three parameters here we need our name the name of our user the email and the username so that's the three things we need from this api so let's just call the string name the string username and the string email after this we need to create our constructor if you need the extensions i'm using i'll leave the link in one of my videos below okay and here is our constructor so we need to create a future like because this code will be asynchronous you know we are not getting the data at once we have to wait for a few seconds no matter how slow your network is no matter how fast your network is you can't get the data at once so it's, it's like if you are waiting for the data that we've gotten in the future so that's why we'll be using a future or before okay so let's, before using the future we have to create a factory like from json to from json code and let me try to explain this so we are getting you know this our file is a json file is in json format so that's why we are getting it from json and also these are what we want to be getting so json name because these things these parameters we don't have to go into another deep level they are just from the first level that's why we are just having a street like json name json username but if you are getting others like you can see this latitude and latitude you can see is in is inside another level it's not like just straight down so this is just a simple api like what everyone wants we all need one simple api actually so after creating this then we need to create the future method so this future users method i call it get users actually you can call it anything you want but i just feel is the best or oh. Well, since we are getting the users so call it get users and yeah as i said earlier it is an asynchronous function so we have to await this and you can see we have an error under that http dot get actually we have to import our http package so let me go up and import it I will import the HTTP package as HTTP as just like the normal conversion to import it and I'll delete that because we can't pass in our URL straight like that we have to use the URI dot pass and then we input our URL and you may have been wondering that where did I get this URL 
it is a URL from our JSON file from our API. I will show you now. This one here, that's the link I'm using. That's the URL I am using. So after that, we have we have a status code. We create this if our status code is equal to 200. We all know what 200 means in web. It means that the request is successful, means that it is okay. Then we want to display it, and you can see that I imported that convert. This is a JSON file, and because we want that to be able to read it, we have to decode it. That's why using JSON decode, and if it is successful, then return the response we are getting from the east from the API. That's response.body. But if it is not successful, then throw an exception and say failed to load. So I hope you understand this. We are returning the users from JSON and then we are decoding it. After decoding, we will return the body if it is successful. And that's just all we need from here. Time to implement it in our UI. So first of all, we have to turn this into a stateful widget because our data are changing. And then after this, we have to initialize, we have to call it. So yeah, we'll be using the future users and we call it the users. I can give it any other name actually, but I just, you know, just make it easier, make it easy for you. And because we are not getting it immediately, we have to add the lists at the front and import your API call file. After that, <coughs> sorry about that. You, initialize it and call the init method so when you call the init method you set your user you set the users which you call up there you set it to get users oh Set the users get users okay and then also we, you know we have a center we'll create our body and I want everything to be in the center so be a center widget and inside our child we have the future builder now for the future builder we have some required parameters like we need a builder for it and so the builder will take two parameters a context and a snapshot I guess I'm faster than the video but okay take two parameters a context and a snapshot now the snapshot is like the reply the response we are getting from our API that is our snapshot also you can see that I already called the future it also need a future lens which will be our user and you know the users is called from the users which we created in our API call file okay now if our snapshot has data like if our response has data then we should return something if there's data so i want to return a column because i want to display my the data i get back in a column so yeah return a column we have our main axis alignment dot center and our cross axis alignment dot center. Now you can see three text there. That's actually the data we'll be getting from our API. You can see snapshot dot data dot name, snapshot dot data dot username, and snapshot dot data dot email. Now we are getting errors, and since we don't want, we have heard of the null safety feature in that we don't want our data to be null so we'll add the exclamation 
mark than the which indicates that which just shows that our the data return cannot be null if it is null it is true and exception because since we call that it must have data then that means it should not be null else if snapshot has error then you should display the snapshot dot error dot to string as i said you know the format is in a json format you have to and everything is not in a string you have to convert it to a string that's what you are using and finally we should just have a last else statement we should return a circular loading progress okay why am i still having errors here actually i know but let's just follow the video what actually happened here i used brackets instead of curly braces so that's why the is an error here if you notice in this video but i'll change it it took me a few minutes to actually know that it was bracket i use instead of curly braces so in your code you just use curly braces instead of the brackets to make it faster and now it has been solved so time to test it in our hub actually the first time i run the app didn't work i guess the data my network was slow so it was taking time to get the data it was not displaying but after restarting the app another time then you get the data Let's wait for the data to show and now also if you remember we had an else statement that if nothing if you are not getting the data if you are not getting an error then it should display circular loading progress i guess it was disconnected from the main not run hub that's why it was not running But now it runs. So now you can see our data has been displayed in our hub. This is just a simple way to get data from an API. I'll run it again so that you see it. When the data, when there is no data, it shows the circular loading progress. Now I want to display the error. I removed. I change the link and we can we see there's an error here exception fail to load and now we get our api back we get our results back so this is just a simple way to display api in your app if you enjoyed this video kindly subscribe to my channel and like this video if you have any question put it in the comments